home at the Henderson Center to face the Houston Cougars and the Herd trying to sweep the four Texas teams in Conference USA for the first time ever. Take a seat. The Conference USA race is heating up. Marshall basketball with Tom Harriet starts right now. This is Marshall Thundering Herd Basketball with head coach Tom Harrion and Keith Morehouse. And hi, everybody, and welcome to the show. Glad to have the coach again after uh, the Herd's putting together a little modest three-game winning streak. Coach, uh, you got a nice win at SMU, and then you take care of business at home against Houston. And as we said there, it's getting interesting, isn't it? Well, yeah, it is. It's uh, every conference in America, and uh, no different in Conference USA, Keith, that uh, each night there's going to be some twists and turns, and uh, we just got to stay the course, handle our business game by game, and uh, control our own destiny in terms of just uh, one game at a time, one day at a time, and uh, playing a little bit better now. Uh, obviously want to continue to gain some consistency, but, uh, you know, good wins this time of the year. You just got to take the win and move on. Yeah, exactly. There's so much to prepare for, so you do have to put it in your rearview mirror. But as we talked about Conference USA, a look at the standings, and I know you're not a kind of a look-ahead guy, but when you glance at the uh, conference standings, you got Memphis atop the field, and then look at the rest. Everybody kind of bunched up together there, Coach. It's anybody's game at this point. Well, it's going to come down to the last, even the last day of the season uh, in conference play. I think there's obviously uh, significant matchups uh, throughout with the three remaining uh, Conference nights uh, starting this uh, starting tonight again today against us for us against Memphis, but uh, obviously the chase is on and uh, we've got a chance to stay in the mix. Yeah, absolutely. Is it Memphis uh, ten and three coming off a win against East Carolina? We'll talk about them uh, much more later on in the show. But as as you guys uh, came out against Houston, coach, uh, just everybody wanted to know what you told them at halftime. I thought it was <laughs> a tale of two halves, unlike maybe we've seen this it season. It was. You know, I, I was just you know obviously passionately and emotionally I was honest with our guys. I thought we played tentative. I thought we played a little scared at times. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought we played kind of weak and soft around the basket, and I thought we kind of let uh, a missed free throw, a missed layup, a turnover uh, affect us. You could see our body language wasn't really good, and I thought we played that way. I thought our defense pretty much was good the whole night. Our offensively, we were so inept in the first half. Nine turnovers came out of nowhere. We've been taking much better care of the basketball, uh, but I was honest with them, and I was very passionate, and uh, uh, obviously it worked, so uh, you know, we got to bottle that up and, uh, and uh, see if we can do it again. Funny how you know a block shot here, a nice... Uh and one here, all of a sudden gets the crowd going and gets your guys going. Energy. Energy. Uh, you make plays. Uh, you know, Spikes came in in the second half, gave us great jolt on the defensive end of the floor and on the glass. Uh, but our defense created some offense. We were finally able to get some easy baskets. And then uh, Pena comes in and obviously uh, changes the game in that stretch where he gets it really going. Yep, solid win over Houston. We'll talk about that. But first things first, we'll talk about SMU. The herd out in Dallas. When we come back to Marshall basketball in Tom Harrion, Marshall taking on the Mustangs. We're back after this. Marshall Thundering Herd Basketball is brought to you by Brick Street Insurance, Pebble Huntington Hospital, the Edwards Comprehensive Cancer Center, Creative Kitchens, your local Ford dealer, IBEW Local 317, AT&T, the Friends of Cole, and the West Virginia Lottery. Welcome back to Marshall Thundering Herd Basketball with head coach Tom Harrion and Keith Morehouse. And we welcome you back to Marshall Basketball with Tom Harry and the herd out to Dallas to take on SMU at Moody Coliseum. Coach, uh, that's a team that can give you problems. Obviously, they run a, an unconventional offense, and then the second half, they changed everything up and, <laughs> and gave you guys a run, didn't they? They did, yeah. We were uh, we were obviously really prepared. Uh, I thought we had a week to get ready with the bye. Mm -hmm. uh, they run, like you said, unconventional. A Princeton, uh, Princeton-esque offense really spread with cuts and uh, spaced the floor really well and back cuts. I thought we guarded that tremendously well, uh, did a great Great job on, on uh, Naya Kundi, their all-conference mm -hmm. player. Uh, and then in the second half, we were able to get up to a comfortable lead. And then they kind of they abandoned their offense and just kind of opened the floor up and kind of caused problems for us. We didn't do a good job closing the game, Keith. Uh, but I was really pleased with our defense for the most part, other than the last seven, six or seven minutes, which was really poor at that time. But uh, we went on the road against a dangerous team, playing on the road. We hadn't won on the road in a little while. Now it had been a little while for us. So it was good for us to get back in the winning track on the road. And our kids responded really well. Yeah, we'll show you the numbers from out there as Marshall beats SMU now 8 and 0 all time against the Mustangs and as we mentioned you open up the big lead when it's 73 68 and uh, DeAndre I mean uh, Demir Pitts rather 18 points in the second half you needed those as they were making a run and DeAndre Kane uh, team high eight rebounds and uh, that's a game coach a little bit of a gut check like you say on the road teams are going to come out everybody goes how do you lose a 20 point lead well on the road someone's going to make a run well you're playing on the road and you got to play against a team that, that historically shoots the ball extremely well they rely on a three-point shot a great 
great deal. And we gave up a few late, uh, but uh, you know it was good. We, we we did a great job in that stretch to stretch it out to 20. Uh, let's not get away from that. We stretched it out to 20, and you know uh, we try to practice sim some situations in practice. I haven't practiced plus 20 yeah. in, in a while, Keith. So yeah. it was uncharted territory. Again, make no mistake. I'll take the blame. We didn't do a good enough job closing it out, but uh, you know I was, I was pleased for us. We played really well to get to that point. Uh, a lot of guys stepped up for us. Nigel was really good uh, uh, for us off the bench. Uh, DeAndre coming back off uh, missing the game. Uh, so it was great to get him back in there. And then uh, Demir in that stretch was really, really good in the second half. That kind of stretched the lead out and gave us a comfortable lead. Yeah, and give Coach Darty credit for changing things up. And SMU making the nice run. After the game, the herd returns to Huntington. We talked in practice about the win over SMU heading into Houston. Yeah, it was a great win for us. Uh, the last couple of road games we played, we lost. So uh, it's good to get one on the road. SMU is a good team. Uh, they got a good coach and a good offense, and, and they move well. So uh, we got up on them, but uh, we let down a little bit, and they, they cut the lead. But we finished strong, so that's, that was good for us. Now you're back home for the three of your last four. How, how beneficial is that now as you, as you guys want to close up strong, right? Yeah, we need to. Uh, I think we can still finish in the top three uh, due to a couple teams losing. But uh, it's great to be home here in front of our crowd. Well, we were really good for about 30 minutes of the game, and we were good. Uh, it's maybe as well as we've played on both ends of the floor. Now, obviously, I would have liked to see us close it out a little bit better, uh, which we didn't do a good job of uh, in any stretch. But uh, this time of the you know, mid to late February, you, you're, taking, you're taking wins and you're stuffing them in your bag and you're getting on the plane and coming back home. It's that simple. And yeah, we recognize we still got to get better in a lot of areas. Put it in your gym bag and bring it on home. That's what the herd did. Uh, coming back now, they've got Houston in the Henderson Center. We'll talk about it with highlights and reaction after this. Welcome back to Marshall Thundering Herd Basketball with head coach Tom Harrion and Keith Morehouse. So the Herd gets a win against SMU now back home against Houston and the Cougars come in coach to the Henderson Center with some momentum and, and some talent that maybe people didn't under, didn't really understand until they saw it. No, there's no doubt obviously deceiving in terms of their uh, their record mm -hmm. uh, overall but uh, a team that came off a great win against Southern Miss over the weekend one of the best wins in the conference to date um, and obviously they had our attention. They're a tremendously talented group albeit a little young uh, James Dickey's second year he's got an infusion of young talented players on that especially in the offensive end of the floor and uh, they gave us a lot of problems in the first half and uh, we made some adjustments adjustments and uh, played pretty well in the second half. Yeah, interesting. When you see a group of new guys come in, you have to adjust. You guys did that very well. We check out the highlights from the Henderson Center on a Wednesday night. 6,000 plus on hand and another nice crowd coaching. You needed these guys in the second half. The first half, uh, obviously, Houston came to play. DeAndre came with the jumper here to uh, give you your first bucket, but things got a little dicey after this. Yeah, we were very uh, inefficient on offense. I uh, thought we did a really poor job. We didn't take care of the basketball. That's an easy bucket right there. Too little, too little resistance right there in that post move. Uh, uh, Alandis Harris, who we did a much better job on this year than we did all last year. And Demir driving it right there. But offensively, we were really out of sorts. Yeah, you look at uh, Thompson here, quick player here with a nice jumper, makes it 10-6, 10-4 uh, this time, and then uh, Pitts with a step back to make it 10-6. I thought you, you mentioned uncharacteristically turning the ball over in this stretch. I thought was no doubt problem. we had nine in the first half, Keith, and we really have been taking much better care of the ball overall. And uh, we, I thought we played a little soft, a little weak around the basket. We, uh, Dennis gets a nice stick back jump hook right there, but I didn't think we finished well. We left too many points on the free throw line again. So uh, good pull up off the ball screen right there by DeAndre. Pretty good execution. Uh, we were struggling offensively. So every basket we needed to make. The kid Young is a really talented player. His dad's Michael Young, the great player at Houston. Yeah. And Joe is a really talented scorer. Nice pass inside from Jameer Pitts to DeAndre Kane, as you guys uh, You know, I thought, I thought at this point, Coach, you really could have been down double digits the way the, the half was going. There's no doubt. I think we were fortunate. There's a good, good play at the end of the half. Uh, DeAndre finds Jameer for an easy basket. So it's 31-23 at halftime. Second, uh, uh, you don't have to tell me exactly, but you must have said something uh, worthwhile in the locker room. I counseled them very aggressively. <laughs> I like how you say that, counsel them very aggressively. Well, this was uh, maybe a harbinger of things to come as uh, Kane gets the bounce. And this, I thought, really inspired you guys. Nigel Spikes on defense. Yeah, weak side rotation, great job there. Uh, Dennis holds his ground, and Nigel comes over and, and changes the game. There's a breakout. Our defense finally started to create some offense for us. Dennis with a great finish and transition off a, off a, off a, off a stop for us, and, and it led to a breakout. This little stretch here, five minutes or so, this play here, I thought, embodied what DeAndre Kane can do for you guys. I mean, he goes back and gets it, goes into the stands. 
And as we fast forward, Demir Pitts comes down, hits a shot. That's a huge play. There's no doubt, obviously. It's a hustle play, and there's Demir with a tough, tough pull-up, you know, playing like a senior should down the stretch. But the play was made by DeAndre going into the stands off the, you know, he's keeping him with his, his play. And there's a great look inside to Dennis. Dennis gave us good minutes overall, uh, as he has all, all season. This inspired the crowd when you're playing defense and going after loose balls. And then uh, I thought Shaq Johnson had some great shot selection in the second half. You just got this, at this point, the crowd's into it, and you guys are rolling. Yeah, we're playing with a lot of momentum at this point. And there's a, again, a, we, get a, we get a stop, we get in transition. Uh, and De uh, the Demir finds uh, Dennis on the, on the backside of that rotation on the transition for a dunk, easy basket. We need to get easy baskets, and then we obviously did a good job sharing the basketball and moving the ball. Great drive. We attacked. Our shot selection was much better in the second half, and uh, we played with a lot more confidence. Coach, at one point, I, I uh, figured, if I did my math correctly, you were on a 40 to 10 run in this game. Yeah, something like that, I guess, Keith. You know, we just uh, obviously we were playing really, but our defense created that. And then offensively, we kind of relaxed a little bit. We took much, much better care of the ball in the second half, got shots up, and we got really good shots, shooting over 50% from the floor in the second half. Yeah, you weren't settling for threes. In fact, uh, uh, Dago Pena, the only guy to hit a three for you, he hit four of them. But this is the kind of thing when you guys penetrate that it gets everybody involved, and that's, uh, that's how you run your offense. Yeah, no doubt. And again, there's a nice job in transition. Uh, just sharing the ball, getting easy baskets, uh, playing in the open court. We're really good offensively when we do that. And like there, great. Another look off. He looks off to Nigel and finds Rob on a, uh, on a little easy drop off dunk. Here's the uh, last play of the highlights, but I think this is kind of a, a fun play. Th this just says you're not going to get anything cheap. I thought baskets were really tough to come by in this game for both guys. Yeah, Thank especially in the first half. Yeah. I thought we just played relentlessly. I thought our, our defense, like I said, our, overall I thought was really good the whole night. Uh, offensively, we were so inept in the first half, but we had, to, we had to do a good job in the second half. We did much better. We settled into the game. Our kids responded at halftime and came out with an excellent effort in the last 20 minutes of the game. Yeah, you see the board there. Pitts with 15, Kane and Pena both with 14. And again, you swept all four. Uh, Texas teams. That's never been done before by Marshall in Conference USA and outscored Houston 43-27 in the second half. Coach, when, when you talk about effort, and, and but you can talk about it in the locker room, but how do you get them to translate it and bring it out onto the floor? Well, you know, they, they have to flip the switch. You know, yeah, again, I was honest with them. you got to paint the picture, and you can't, you know, I'm not a guy that pulls punches, as you know, and uh, I just didn't think we played Marshall basketball the first 20 minutes of that game, especially in the offensive end of the floor. We settled in. Um, you know, I'm not sure, you know, maybe they responded to some of the things I challenged them about in at halftime, uh, clearly they came out and we flipped the switch, and we were so much more aggressive. We were in attack mode. We played with great confidence and a better rhythm on offense. Is it as simple, coach, as saying, "Hey, the season kind of hangs it here"? Uh, not, not, not to make it overly dramatic, but you know that was a big game. You had uh, to win at was, home. Yeah, we couldn't afford uh, to slip in that situation. Right. We got too much at stake, like every other team right now mm -hmm. at this point of the season. Um, you know, I, you know, I don't paint that kind of picture, Keith, mm -hmm. in terms of the reality of you know where you're at. But our kids know, mm -hmm. and uh, they knew they didn't play very well. They were right. honest with themselves. Right. I'm sure um, there's moments when I leave the locker room to meet with my staff that they, I'm sure, were sharing this, you know, similar thoughts uh, as I maybe shared with them in terms of how we played and what we did, needed to do to, to play better. And obviously, uh, uh, they responded to their credit as a good team should, and, and, and we did. Message received. All right, we'll come back and uh, get some post-game reaction as the Herd wins number 17 of the season against Houston. We're back after this. And now, time for the IBEW Local 317 Electrifying Play of the Week. Back to the show. That was Dennis Tennant. Coach, he jumped from that Conference USA logo. That uh, That's a pretty hefty jump. Yeah, there, he I took thought. off a little earlier maybe than I like, <laughs> but uh, he's a, I was a great finish uh, with some contact from behind in that play. So, uh, again, getting easy baskets. Uh, Dennis uh, played very, very well. Yeah, I thought he did. Ten, ten, re ten points, nine rebounds. As we talk about the Houston Herd game and what happened at halftime, uh, here are the players and the coaches afterwards. That was great, man. We showed a team effort out there. Uh, like I said, man, it was it was our coach. Coach got in this at halftime and told us we need to play hard. First half we wasn't playing hard. It was beating us to loose balls, rebounds. So second half we got we got into it and got into them a little bit, got them out of their game, got them out of our uh, plays, and it helped us. The fans always play a big part though, you know. They help, you know, get the momentum going. And once it's going, you know, you can't really hear much in there. So that helps always. So, you know, they play a big part. Uh, I thought our defense all, pretty much the whole night was really, really good. But we were so bad offensively in the first half 
Uh, it was so, you know, nine turnovers came out of nowhere. We've been pretty good with the ball lately. Uh, we missed easy buckets around the easy ba baskets around the bucket. Missed obviously left points on the free throw line. Uh, Mark Klein is the uh, free throw coach, and he's not available to speak to the media tonight. So. Uh, uh, but I'm really proud of the group. Uh, they responded at halftime. Uh, I doubt, I hope they didn't give you too much. The uh, guys that you spoke with, uh, they were counseled very aggressively at halftime. Whatever we did in the first half, we left it in the locker room at halftime. We certainly got to give uh, Tommy and his team credit. I, I thought they played a terrific second half. Uh, I got the crowd into the game with the blocks and also the three-pointers. Uh, and then uh, we ran efficient uh, both offensively and defensively. So the herd gets the big win, I guess, except for the free throw situation, Coach. You were pretty pleased with that one, huh? Yeah, not bad. Uh, like I said, I thought, again, we settled into the game at halftime. It took us a little too long. Uh, but offensively, we were so out of sorts in the first half. But free throw line obviously was disappointing. We, uh, we left too many points on the line uh, throughout the season. So it's something that we got to continue to work on. we got to continue to get better at, uh, which we can. We still have time to get better at that. Uh, but overall, I thought it was a good, great response by our group. A uh, good challenge for them, you know, kind of get knocked on their, t their heels a little bit. Uh, and if you're going to be a good team, you got to find ways to win differently. We had to come back out of an eight, eight point hole at halftime and mm -hmm. I thought our crowd was tremendous in the second half really helped us and, and you made up that deficit pretty quickly which I, I think helps in a game like that the, the longer you go into a game and down eight or ten it's tougher huh? you know there's absolutely there's no doubt about that you know I thought we came out and kind of set the tone right off the bat with the defense we we're able to score a little easier to cut the lead right away and kind of take control of the game pretty early in the second half which as you just said was really important because you can't at home when a team comes on the road you can't let them play with the lead mm -hmm. uh, and play with a comfort level uh, and I thought we did a good job of kind of taking control of the game. All right, so the herd gets the win over Houston, number three in a row. Uh, no uh, time to celebrate because Memphis Tigers are up next. We'll talk about that one coming up when we come back to the show. Marshall Thundering Herd Basketball is brought to you by... Pebble Huntington Hospital, the Edwards Comprehensive Cancer Center, AT&T, your local Ford dealer, Creative Kitchens, the West Virginia Lottery, the Friends of Cole, Brick Street Insurance, and IBEW Local 317. And we welcome you back to the show as the herd gets set to talk a little bit about Memphis. Uh, first, Coach, we'll ask you, as we do each week, how everybody's doing health-wise. It's it's a tough time of the year for everybody, huh? Yeah, it is, and uh, fortunately, uh, we're in relatively good health, uh, minus you know the normal wear and tear uh, mm -hmm. of a long season. So, uh, knock on wood, we've uh, we've kind of weathered the storm to this point. All right, here's what's ahead, Coach. Uh, we're later today. The Memphis Tigers into the Henderson Center. That's always fun to watch. And then looking ahead just a little bit, that Marshall East Carolina game. We'll have it right here on WSAZ. That's Wednesday at uh, Minges Coliseum. But uh, Let's get back to that Memphis game. This is a team coach that everybody's pointed to since since Marshall's been in this league, and um, they they uh, they are always a tough out, and uh, certainly they're going to be a tough one again. Well, there's no doubt uh, they've they've carried the flag and the torch for this conference uh, obviously since uh, Marshall joined it, and uh, they're uh, presently in first place. Uh, so you know, obviously a great challenge, uh, but we obviously one that played a really tough game down there against them, had a great game, but uh, didn't close it out, didn't finish, and we uh, obviously will need a, a great effort from both our fans and our players uh, as we get ready for this game. This afternoon. What's the toughest part about playing them? Just their athleticism from top to bottom pretty yeah, much? Yeah, and their talent level. I mean, they've got obviously very talented players. Uh, they're athletically very, very gifted. Uh, this year, I think Josh's team, the biggest difference is they defend so much better. They're mm -hmm. more committed defensively. Uh, when you turn it over, it's usually for points. Uh, mm -hmm. That's uh, And you can't turn it over for points. Uh, you you got to be good in your shot selection. you got to have good ball security. Uh, you got to play very sound, strong. Um, and you got to go at them. you got to compete. And uh, that's one thing we've got to do. We've, we've done historically against them is, 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 is match up and, and go at them, uh, but it's going to be a, a great challenge. One, again, it should be a, a, a tremendous atmosphere in our building uh, later today. Yeah. When you look at what people want to do when you, they play you guys, Coach, they want to kind of slow you down, get you in a set off. Is that similar to Memphis? You'd rather have them, uh, you know, have to work some shot clock before they No doubt. You've you got to get your defense set. The biggest yeah. thing is make them play against your, your set defense, and then obviously uh, with their talent level, that, that that's a, another chore is to guard them in the half court. Will Barton's a player of the year candidate for them, and Tark Black gives us problems. 
problems in the post, and they've got great players uh, supporting them. You know, Crawford is a great shooter, and uh, Joe Jackson's lightning fast, Antonio Barton, uh, Wesley, Wesley Witherspoon's a senior that's an X factor for them. So they've got great personnel, uh, but we want to get our defense set. You got to limit them to one. You can't get beat them. We got out rebounded down at their place, uh, and we get we turned it over for points too too often in, uh, in that stretch in the second half. Did you tell your guys, hey, you've done this before. You've beaten Memphis at the Henderson Center. Is that something you, you kind of at least give them some confidence? Yeah, we referenced that, absolutely. Yeah. You know, and it's a team, obviously, we have great respect for them, as we should, and they deserve it. Uh, but yet, we obviously, we know it's a team that we, we compete against. Uh, we were fortunate to beat them last year at our place. Uh, we had a great game down at their mm -hmm. place. They, they beat us. We didn't get the job done. Uh, so it's, uh, I think, two good teams. Uh, I think, uh, I'd like to think that we both have great respect for one another, and we tee it up uh, later today and uh, see what happens. All right, Coach, good luck against the Tigers. It's Marshall and Memphis, 4 o'clock at the Henderson Center. Be there. The atmosphere always wild and rowdy when the Tigers come to town. For Coach Harry and I'm Keith Morehouse. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Marshall Basketball.